welcome to a special edition of the Christy Taylor Show. And that's our very special guest, April Aileen, all the way from Canada. Happy, Ooh. happy day to you. You know something? I'm super excited. I've been vibing to your music, including the new single. Uh, we're going to be diving deep into all the things that you have going on. But um, April Aileen, such a pretty name. Uh, give me a little history on the name because that's very unique. Well, April, my mom saw that spelling in a book when she was young and she, you know, decided that having it Y-L-L was a, a beautiful way to spell April uh, Gaelic. And then also my middle name, Aileen, is uh, my grandmother's first name. And mm -hmm. I just, you know, decided first middle name keeps it pretty simple for uh, for the artist name. So and, and my grandmother played piano and both of them, actually. So I was inspired by both of them. And then my mom and then me. So three generations of women and uh, and piano. <laughs> wow. You know, I'm so glad I, 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 you know, asked you that question because I was noting for those who will dive deep into who you are, that you do have a lot of strong feminist messages in your music. Um, so we're talking three generations of women who have loved music, keyboardist. And can we talk about your songwriting and how that came to be and the themes that you put in your music? Yes, certainly. So I really played piano since I was five years old and I traveled to Ukraine for piano master classes when I was a teenager. I thought maybe I'd, you know, go, go down that route of being a classical pianist, but then I, I never really wanted to practice that much. So uh, I eventually kind of wobbled, you know, music was in and out of my life. I started singing, but it was a huge fear. Um, mm. And then, yeah, like I, I realized that I love pop music. I love good melodies. And I started writing more so as just like a therapy for myself to, to process how I was, you know, taking in the world. And then uh, now here I am, basically, after a little detour into film, I realized that, you know, it was time to come back to music and write music for film and to kind of tap back into that passion because something was missing from my life. And I didn't really know at the time. And then I realized it was music. So... <laughs> wow, you are really resonating strongly with me because I have, I always tell people, I, even though I had a career in media and uh, a produced screenwriter, I always say music is my first love, always will be, you know, singing in choirs and stuff of that nature, a little songwriting. So to hear you say that something's missing, and sometimes I feel that it's like, oh, I need to re be around live musicians <laughs> to kind of feed my soul. Uh, I totally get it. So you said, Ukraine as far as were you okay I know you live in Canada so were you born in Europe uh no I'm, I'm from Canada but I was really fortunate enough to be given an opportunity at a young age and I mean they have some of the best musicians in the world you know especially for piano so it was really my uh my first time going international and then you know obviously with all the news the last little bit yeah it's uh you know it, it's it's I that's where I fell in love with music so I just you know have so much passion and respect for those people and uh, and hope that you know that they're oh. able to get through this so but that's uh that's where i learned that you know music is stronger than than language than you know mm -hmm. like it, it everybody understands that frequency especially when you're sitting you know hearing live music it's it, some of the songs some of the themes like they can uplift you they can make you feel emotion and it, it's cathartic for many you know and then sometimes you just want to dance and and have fun and you know come back to smiling and yeah community. so yeah music does all those things and no matter really where you are or what language you speak you can you can hear it you know yeah. in, the, in the music so and your feminist themes in your songs, when did that develop? Was that teenage or more into your early uh, 20s? I'd say early 20s. I mm -hmm. um, When I was in university, one of my favorite, I often joke because um, I, you know, had a hard time focusing. So the only textbook that I actually like finished reading front to back was The Psychology of Women. And I realized, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, you look at the planet, you're like, women are really 50 percent of this world, you know, or people that identify with this with this as a feminine person. And, you know, that like that's that's a huge number, half the planet, you know. And then I started seeing some, you know, the, the way that things from object objectification themes, um, how, you know, culturally across different continents, um, this looks, uh, this is perceived as strong for women. But then when you look at really why it is, you start to wonder if it's, 
it's not really as empowering for the woman. And so you, you start to see these things all over. And, mm-hmm. you know, I got, I got really passionate about that and, and wrote some, some music and, you know, um, but, I, and, and, you know, going through just to make it a little bit more lighter, you know, even just dating as a 21st century woman, you know, you kind of go through these situations and you're just like, <laughs> ah, but I, in all of it, it's really helped me set, my boundaries and you know to kind of inspire young women to do this all women to do the same and have love for themselves and see their own beauty because when you do that then you don't put up with anyone of you know that that's going to treat you treat you uh in a in a poor way but that's including yourself too so okay because oftentimes we're the first offenders of our own self-care that's so true that is true well, yeah, I mean, you know, um, like you're inspired to do something. And so you you take a chance in business or you speak up in a meeting or you pitch a new idea. And then, you know, you have that little thing in your head that's like, oh, you're not good enough. And like they didn't like it because of this. And like you yeah. always do this. And like, why do you do this? And you know what? Like, you know, um, you're not really you don't really look so great today. And like that little negative voice that kind of gets yeah. in there and messes things up for you. So I think it's, you know, being aware of that and then kind of uplifting yourself and saying, hey, like I might not look exactly how I want to or that might have not gone exactly how I wanted. But I did it. I tried. Exactly. I it out, you know, you know, I was looking through and of course, you all be sure to follow her on all her social media. Um, but one thing I totally was falling in love with was your YouTube channel. And I remember, first of all, amazing. OK, let me pause. Your capturing nature in so many of your songs was so refreshing because I like a lot of times to just put ambient music on that has nature. So even while your music was playing, I was like, oh, water. <laughs> it's yeah. like, oh, trees, oh, mountains. It's like it was like a nature <laughs> geographic you know just such a beautiful um so many beautiful landscapes that you incorporated in your music how has that become important to you and you know is that from a spiritual space or just your love of nature it's well it's interesting i love swimming that's sort of my number one place to be is underwater you know just kind of mermaid diving to be honest that's that's like my friend laughs he's like you know that says something about your personality that you need you need to swim underwater and have pressure around your head for your mind to slow down. I was like, shut up. <laughs> but like, and I grew up on the East coast of Canada. We have the highest mm. tides in the world between oh, um, wow. Nova Scotia and New Brunswick. So that's always been, you know, like when I'm stressed out, I go to the ocean and then also I've always lived. I love cities, but I grew up with a lot of nature around me and ponds and trees and, you know, little animals and birds and squirrels and, you know, you name it. I've always had a dog. And so it's just kind of always been in my life. But ironically, I didn't mean for all of those things to kind of be in the music video. It just happened because I, I felt a lot of, you know, earth, air, uh, scenic landscapes. And I mean, I think it's just so important to honor honor nature because it's helped me it's probably like um my biggest healing energy in the last especially in the last two years oh just yeah speaking of the last two years because you're saying east the eastern portion of canada in the new brunswick so that's even further east than toronto correct oh it certainly is we got a lot of toronto Toronto folks know and it's even further east than Montreal. So, whoa. Okay. Okay. So you're touching once again, the bodies of water again, that you are near. It's uh, it's called the Bay of Fundy and it's the highest tides in the world. And the tides will come in and they'll go up and down like 44 feet or more periodically, whoa. like every day. So oh my goodness, 40 feet. That's, uh, yes, that's yeah. taller than some houses. Indeed. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So with you growing up in that environment and having a natural love, it, of nature and then to have the musicality that you've had so young, five years old, even uh, when did you decide to more importantly, make music your life? Um, Cause I hear that you did some film. So I definitely want to kind of dive into that. But when did you say music is going to be my way of life? Uh, well, I mean, it floated in and out and then I ended up getting into some event uh, management and then started my own company. And that we did this event with Sir Richard Branson and he's, you know, one of the best entrepreneurs in the world. So I, in I'm the world. Yeah, in the world. yeah, literally. <laughs> and I remember, I remember meeting him and just kind of being, um, 
uh, a, he has this unbelievable aura. Um, mm -hmm. and I never came from like a family that had strong business acumen. Like they were, you know, kind of your traditional jobs, um, that have good pensions <laughs> and I'm like, Oh, I'm going to be a musician. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, but so I started my own business and I would say it was um, in 2013, I went to Texas and ended up getting involved in, um, I ended up meeting the brothers uh, that produced Dallas Buyers Club. And I, it was my first feature film script. I ended up coming back to Canada being like, I need to learn everything I can about um, film. And especially that was written by like a Montreal writer. As a screenwriter, you probably uh, know the movie and kind of know yes. how tough that industry is too right yeah. like getting very your very yeah and then it was i ended up working on a couple films connecting going to la a bit and then somewhere in like the first year and a half like one of my really good friends just goes are you gonna do marketing and pr and like like see what what do you really want to do i'm like well i want to write a song for this movie and she's like well then do it i was like but what if they don't like it she's like just do it then they say no like what do you just try you know um, and then the, the writer, she loved it. She's actually down in LA. She's, um, won an Emmy for some of her work. Her name's came in grant. I ended up writing, um, her song, her movie was called butterflies. And I wrote a song called butterflies, which is on my Spotify. And that really like kicked off the start. And, um, I met the producer who invited me down to Savannah, Georgia. I did my first album down there, Savannah soul. And then I was about to say that was the album Savannah soul with the butterflies and a lot of nature references. Yes. <laughs> Honey, you have been globe trotting. Okay. I'm, I'm give me the story. So you in Savannah, you do a record Savannah soul. Wow. It was amazing, like unbelievable. We flew, we had these incredible musicians from Toronto uh, and outside Toronto area. They came down to Savannah. Kenny Munshaw was the producer, like one of like a iconic man in Canada in the industry. And I was, I was blessed. Um, yeah. So I made, I made that album. And then I, I came back to Canada and I was in Toronto and I was going back and forth to LA a lot. And I did some collabs with some producers kind of got in the EDM space, um, did some okay. like, you know, I can hear that in some of your. Okay, I hear yeah. the journey now. I hear the journey. Okay, yeah, including then, the one where you're on Venice Beach. Yes, uh, yes. You did a um, video just walking and <laughs> and just engaging with people. That was amazing. That what was song, actually, what was the title of that song? Because it was it it did have a little extra rock to it compared to you, the music that was on Savannah Soul. Was it? Um, well, there were two that I filmed down on Venice. I did a live version of this song called Ain't Right. And that's it. That was guys, it. Yeah. So mm -hmm. in I ended up singing at this club in L.A. They asked me to like, I forget how I got invited there. Somebody heard me sing somewhere and, and invited me to go perform at this like um, at the oldest jazz club in Hollywood called the Baked Potato. And I showed up there and was singing. And then I met um, some musicians from the Jimmy Kimmel live band and they ended up playing music with me. So I was like, Hey, my band's the Jimmy Kimmel live guys. Like, well, you know, the, the guitarist and the bass player there became incredible mentors and musicians. And so we got to play like right on Venice beach and there, there were like all the, like, you know, jacked dudes doing their push yes. behind me doing like their, Oh yes. Yeah, swings and just ripped muscles. And I'm like, I remember telling this story about how, you know, because it's kind of funny some of my music you know some of it's like "Ooh, you're hot you're sassy like come closer and then there's another side you know when i'm talking to people i'm like it's not all about image guys like you know there's there's the spirit and the emotional connection which there totally is um so it was funny like i was explaining something about like superficiality and then meanwhile there's like this jacked guy doing these crazy like upside down push-ups yes. people were just like this is so funny <laughs> And there was even one character, well, one gentleman who literally adds himself into the frame with you as you're walking through one part. I, I watched it like a couple of times. I was like, was that intentional? I'm like, no, that was totally impromptu. Your camera guy, the camera yeah. crew just kept rolling. They kept rolling. Oh, that was that was fun. That was fun. Well, nice. Yeah, we had a blast. Andrew, Andrew Kraus, he he actually um I met him at this live music show that he was working on. And then um we did that video and we actually sat at the top of my friend's place, like part of that drone shot. And then we mm -hmm. just like walked down Venice and I basically, I looked hilarious because mm -hmm. I had these headphones on and 
in order to like hear the music and, and those parts of there's another music video called don't make me wait so in order to like make sure i'm singing in time i've got my headset in and i'm just like dancing down the street in like a black leather dress just singing to the top of my lungs and nobody hears music they just see me don't want to waste another night without you and like all these people are like what is she doing and then and then there's just like 30 people standing there at one point and they all start taking photos and they're just like, oh, celebrity sightings. And I was just like, ah, like, what kind of photos am I going to find online after this? <laughs> like, but that was, that was very, it was a very um, emotionally charged and fun video. Um, there's this one though, I, I, because number one, you all have to, to understand why I'm enamored with her YouTube channel, go to her YouTube channel. Uh, as a matter of fact, you have a new single, uh, Wasted on Love. Uh, Wasted, the thing, yeah. Yes, that's going to be on your new album that's coming out this summer. Yes. Okay, we're going to get back to that. But there's this one video that I totally um, loved where you, first of all, the drone shots that they got with you standing on cliffs, um, the, uh, where was that? What part of the world was that? So funny enough, the guy that shot the Venice beach stuff was like, I, I would love to come to Canada. So he came, uh, to visit me in St. Martin's, New Brunswick. And, um, again, it's all along that Fundy trail coastline. And so we went there and he brought his drones, he brought his cameras and we filmed. So I actually brought, you know, California to the East coast. And what's interesting is like, you know, California has the PCH. They have Big Sur. They have that beautiful route, like that coastline. And um, but also in Atlantic Canada, we've got this beautiful terrain that's very untouched. It's raw. It's natural. And, you know, it was it was beautiful to be able to go. And I, I felt like I was in Game of Thrones. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, that's why I said we're part of the world, because it had a lot of the Game of Thrones, Lord of the Rings, um, very world. I mean, world down under. I think that's how they say it down under, uh, because the song itself was so moving. It was so cinematic. Um, and by the last line, it's like making it at home. And, and you've had, you had several versions of that song, but that one was so, it made the song really big, you know, in that space, the way it was shot. Um, tell me about that song particularly. What was the, what was the inspiration for that? That had a few, it's interesting life, right? And how you have like a microscosm and then a macroscosm in terms of themes. And yeah. so in 2016, I drove to California from the East Coast of Canada, which took me a couple of weeks. But I, you know, I stopped in New York and, and New Orleans and Savannah, played shows all through there, um, got to California. And I ended up involved in a spiritual ceremony. And when I went to that ceremony, uh, I met this beautiful woman and she was going through a cancer journey and she would later actually also come to the East coast because she heard that it was really healing up here. And so she came and visited my family and I, you know, showed her that coastline and, and uh, she's no longer with us, but that day I started the song called home and it's as much about, you know, the process of each individual person going through their own hurt, healing from their pain, the darkness, seeing how they can be a better version of themselves as it is about like the larger collective society of, you know, we might not physically be on a map where we call home or we might not be living in an area that we consider home, but home is actually always within, right? You kind of bring it back to that individual and within whatever you believe in, in terms of God or creator or energy or quantum physics, or even if you're an atheist, you know, one of the things you can say is like, well, I've got me, I understand, I partially understand my consciousness. And so, you know, it's that wherever you go, there you are. And so no matter yeah. where we go in the world, we're, you know, we're always with ourselves. We can't escape our own consciousness, you know, at least not yet. Some of us try, <laughs> but you know, it's hard. It's hard. And then some of us write music when they <laughs> want to escape consciousness. <laughs> <laughs> or create art or, you know, do something creative to get it out of your being. Actually, that, that line that you stated that um, where we where we go, there we are. You actually Perfect. state that, which of course is a very common, you know, quote, um, but you even state that in one of your music videos. Uh, so is that something that you live by and, and, and what draws you to that quote? Um, well, I think it's sort of a bit like my life journey that, um, 
like I'm a free spirit, uh, have commitment issues and I like to be on the road a lot. And I'm, you know, probably some gypsy blood in my, in my bloodline. And, you know, I kind of just want to do all the things. And I feel sometimes that we're always, um, you know, it's kind of like the alchemist where you have to go out on the mm -hmm. road and have those experiences mm -hmm. to realize that you have the treasure within yes. and actually, you know, you always had it to begin with, so to speak. And so that quote always makes me realize like, no matter how far you try to run away from your problems, no matter how far you get in a car and drive or get on a plane or get in an ocean and go somewhere, like until you deal with the sort of emotional, spiritual pain that mm -hmm. is inside until you sort through that. And the only way through is, is, or the only way or you can't go around it. The only way is through. And so sitting in that and kind of, um, and it's, it's very spiritual and kind of Buddhist and, you know, meditative in a sense, but we all have issues that, you know, we're holding on to from childhood or, or trauma, you know, PTSD. Um, so until you kind of look within that, like you're always going to carry those energetic problems with you no matter where you are. So it's like, I'm going to hop on a plane to Costa Rica and all my problems are gone when I'm on the beach. And that's probably good for like two days. And then all my problems are still there because I packed them in my suitcase because I didn't. <laughs> they're vacationing. Yeah, they're vacationing with you. Yeah. They have their own pina colada. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Wow. You know, that, that really speaks to me on a lot of different levels in my own evolution, which is, as you say, forever. We're constantly looking through all the parts of us. Um, and you speak about earlier, you spoke earlier about relationships. Um, how have they impacted your music? And, you know, before the 21st century, because because <laughs> there's a 20th century, uh, uh, I, I would say a 20th century way of looking at relationships and a 21st century. Um, so I, I'll say the 21st, the 21st century is definitely one that we're all challenged by. But growing up, what was your view of love and relationships and how has that evolved as you've aged? Oh, that's a good question. So you know, I grew up in a sort of traditional, like my, my parents, I'm lucky, even though they argue they've, uh, they've made it like they're 35 years plus, you know, in a strong relationship. Yeah. Um, you know, my, my grandmother on one side ended up getting divorced, but remarried to this incredible gentleman that treated her like gold and they were best friends. And so I, and then as I grew up, you know, yeah, I always considered, relationships to be um very special and sacred um but i also being a bit of a gypsy and like kind of traveling a lot it was it was hard to build long-term relationships and i'm also kind of the the kind of person that within a few weeks or a month even i know if like something's gonna be if i'm gonna be able to commit to it or if it's gonna be a, a fit you know um and so as I've aged and as I've sort of dated and kind of being a touring musician on the road in different cities, it's it's been difficult to build foundation, right? If you're just continually on the move, um, which works if, if that's what you want. And so in this album, I kind of like go through some of the themes like having everything you think it's going well, you're on the road and then, you know, you're like connecting with this person and then you're, you know, then they ghost you. And it's just like, well, wait, I thought, that, you know, you say all these things, things were going so well, and then you just kind of disappear. Right. So there's that story. And then there's kind of um, just, just heartbreak when, you know, the expectations you have of what something is. And again, like somebody expects you to maybe be at a different point in your life. And, you know, I had a few questions over the years of uh, what's your plan B? How long do you think you'll be on the road so much? Like, where are you going? OK, OK. So, you know, and then it, it's it's interesting when I attract traditional people and then I'm, I'm living like a non-traditional, non-conventional <laughs> sort of. Doesn't life. that always happen? It's like for whatever reason. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, you kind of look at like these more open situations of how, you know, people's love lives are now and so and it's yeah. it's been an interesting yeah like learning a lot about myself and looking at where like you know what's jealousy what does that feel like and why do I get this feeling in this situation and is this really a confidence issue or is this really is this a lack of trust and is there a reason why I'm or is this from another you know dating situation that yeah. I again was carrying in my backpack on vacation <laughs> with me all the time you know 
So yeah, yeah. But, and then, and then kind of realizing, I think that the more I got clear on what I wanted and a lot of that comes through experiencing what you don't want in love women, <laughs> you know, um, yeah. and, and men too. You, you yeah. kind of, yeah, you can, you can define better to the universe or, you know, if you're at a restaurant and you're ordering, it's like, do you, do you want the side salad? What dressing do you want on the side yeah. salad? And and do you want like the bacon bits or no, or do you want, you know, yeah. and, and just kind of understand maybe what's important to you, what your values are. And then, um, and, and communication, I've definitely gotten a lot better at communicating, but I, I still have my moments like where one, one part's like, Oh, that beautiful monogamous traditional marriage. And then the other part's like, I just want to travel and have my freedom and like, just not, not offend <laughs> right. any partner. And I'll take a, yeah. Right. Right. And I'll take a lover every now and then. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. When it's convenient for me. Right. Right. <laughs> And here's a new song that you just dropped in February, Love Month, uh, that doesn't necessarily lend to the traditional values of love and relationship. And uh, we're going to check it out right now. It is, you can set it up for us. It is April, Aileen, Wasted on Your Love. I should have known better, but still I had it. Straight to a door, let you in. Blame it on the weather or whatever. So it begins. I said I wouldn't do this, do this again. But now I'm caving in. So put a little liquid on my lips. The taste of your kiss. Cause I, 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 I can't resist. So I'm a wasted on your love. Oh, I'm a wasted on your love. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking of. I get hot, I get lit, I get loose. Give me more. amazing that's amazing first of all <laughs> i can see you um dancing in the green room <laughs> oh yes indeed indeed oh my goodness so let me and as a matter of fact one of the other songs home that was live from i think you went to a forest and that's where that water was and that was one of the ones the soundtrack to that just the intro was beautiful so the new album which is coming out this summer it's entitled 
One second. Let me make sure I microphone check one, two, one, two. Okay, so the new album comes out this summer and it is? It's called Bad Things. Bad yeah. Things. So uh, one of the bad things is definitely being wasted on somebody's love. <laughs> Tell just totally it. strong, totally just addicted. Uh, what led to that song? Was it a real life experience or just a combination? Oh, definitely a real life experience. <laughs> oh, wow. So tell oh. me more. Um, oh, it's just like one of the most beautiful, one of the most beautiful love encounters ever on like a physical, emotional, mental, spiritual uh, all, all of the areas that you can, you know, fall in love with somebody. And one of the things I found was like, I'm a very independent person that likes to, you know, not have anything really control me. And I remember like, we'd spend this time together and it was magical. Like, and then say, for example, I'm away from him for a little bit. I'm, I'm feeling the withdrawal of not being around them. And like, when are they going to text? When am I going to hear from them? When are we going to hang out again? Like, I want to make a plan. Like, are they, you know, my, let's see where this goes. And, and, and just like that sort of like just completely enthralled where your whole life, you know, and you're kind of like, whoa, check yourself, girl. Like, <laughs> what, what's going on? <laughs> so then I, I sat down, um, my friend, I was, I was touring and she had this little nineties Casio keyboard. And I just, Ooh. I sat down and kind of like the one on the screen here. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. I sat down, I wrote it and I, I wrote the song in 20 minutes and I, I sent it whoa. to the producer in the UK. And he's just like, yeah, mate, like we're going to make this a hot dance track. I was like, yes. <laughs> wow. Indeed. And it has, you know, some Madonna vibe. And I hear that you splash in a little Britney in your work and yeah. even Stephen Nicks. So of course the influence, musical influence is definitely very dance driven. And even the styling, very retro, very retro. So who did the uh, video overall and who was responsible? Because I know that you now move between music and film. Um, so do you have filmmaker friends who shoot your videos now? I do. Yeah. Um, so that was kind of a, a, a great part about being in the film industry is having experience um, and understanding how to be on set and sort of all those different intricate parts. So I end up co-producing or, you know, um, being involved in a lot of the music videos, which is great because that was one of my original goals with having or being in the creative space was being able to collaborate with others and like whether it's visual art whether it's you know telling a story through through film it's you know connecting the music and really making that theme and making that vision even greater and having more of a t of a team involved um so the guy that did this is andrew tidby he's been you know over 23 years doing film work he's done cbc stuff and some pretty big music videos i i probably shouldn't i think he did one for like mariah carey i don't know if i'm allowed to say that but anyways um <laughs> sorry if we, go, if we go to imdb it'll be listed <laughs> yes, I'm like i'm pretty sure um <laughs> But yeah, so so he was really great. Um, we filmed it all. We basically over two to three days. And I I don't dance. This was my first time trying to ah, dance. Yeah, uh, you were having a lot of fun then. You you were coordinated. You were coordinated. <laughs> well, it was my, my good friend. She was like, again, the same one that was like, you know, she always asks me, oh, you know, like, what is it that you really want to be doing? And then it was her name's Jennifer. She actually does a lot of my photography, too. Um, and she said, girl, like you need dance. You need to dance for this song. Like, it's so much fun. You just want to dance. You want to be at the club. You want to be working out. You just want to, you know, and she's like, I'm sorry, but you got to dance. I'm like, but I don't dance. She's like, yep, you got to learn. <laughs> it's like, ah. So then I, I reached out um, to the owner of the studio dance school, which is this badass woman that, you know, runs her own company. She contacted those four girls. They like, they created that in a day and I, oh, wow. I had to learn it in like a week. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. And the funny thing, too, is that while we're rehearsing it, we're in a studio and there's mirrors all around us and I'm in the back so I can watch them and I can see the mirrors. And I'm like, Everything's good. And then like the next time we meet up, we're on set and then there's no mirrors. And then it's like, oh, you're in the front, by the way. And I'm like, <laughs> like oh, why don't okay. we play? <laughs> but we, you know, it, it worked out. Everybody was super professional. It was a lot of fun. So. Wow. So what are some of the next, okay, some of the other songs that's on this new album that's coming out this summer? So a new one that's coming out is Fall With Grace. And that was sort of, um, originally I wrote it and it sounded like an 80s, 90s Lindy on 
and then mix of Sinead O'Connor, nothing compares to you love ballad of, of absolute heartbreak. And then again, my friend was like, no, nah, like all the words are such heartbreaking in, in their messaging. And we need to like express that heartbreak through having a good groove and, and dancing that off, you know? So, so again, so that's a really cool upbeat track. I love it. Um, I did a little bit of choreography in that one, but not too much. And then bad things, um, which is the title track of the album. And and that one's kind of like my, my sassy side, you know, that's like, well, I might flirt with you. I might, I might like have fun. I'm just going to be a little bit of a tease. Like that's chat at the club. That's like, have some fun dancing. And like, I don't know, maybe see you later. Maybe I'll give you my number. I haven't decided maybe. yet. <laughs> maybe we'll see <laughs> so it's kind of that fun flirty side you know so one of the things that i know that you're you're doing you know with the album coming in this summer but the single already out is really pushing people to your social media and to your youtube kind of give us an idea of how we can be supportive of you april well the best way um there's a well following on instagram uh, A-P-R-Y-L-L, Aileen with an A, A-I-L-E-E-N. You can see it down on the bottom. Yeah. Um, Instagram, one of the things I'm really focusing right now is on the YouTube channel. So really growing subscribers because I'd like to focus a lot on, on more regular content there. And I've got all the videos. And so that's exciting. Um, building up my TikTok right now. So that's a, oh. you know, I'd say, yeah, within, a, within like, yeah, it's, yeah, right now it, it's good to go. So same thing on there, April Aileen. And then adding the song to, you know, following me as an artist on Spotify and Apple Music, all those, all that, all those platforms um, and, and do that for any artist that you like, because it's if you heart the song, add it to your library, add it to a playlist or and follow the artist like those are all really good free social currency uh, things you can do to help independent musicians. Um, and then last but not least, I have a mailing list. So if you connect on my website, it's uh, aprilaileen.com. Again, the A-P-R-Y-L-L, Aileen with an A, uh, .com. That's got everything there. So yeah, any of those ways. But I'd say my favorites, Instagram and YouTube, and then uh, Spotify, Apple Music. <laughs> and right. SoundCloud well, as well, too. Oh, yeah, that's right. SoundCloud. We have that across the bottom as well. So on your SoundCloud, is it a lot of your um, older music, you know, in the early 2000s or is it the more recent stuff? Uh, it's it's everything. Like I have the Savannah Soul album up there. I have some of the DJ EDM uh, remixes we've done and, and those collabs. And then I've got the Wild Wolves. I'm still alive, which is kind of more like of a, of a rock, like a cinematic rock song and then home. Uh, which the, the song that you love. And then, yeah, this this whole album, like it'll be coming out as the months go on as singles and then eventually it'll all be up there. So, yeah. Okay, I'm so glad you mentioned before we left the Wild Wolves. Can I tell you that music video? Please break, break it down. Okay, you all have to, first of all, go to her YouTube channel and look for... Um, that particular one, uh, give the title and give me the breakdown of the video concept. It was, I was mesmerized. I watched it twice back to back. Like, did I just see what I saw? <laughs> okay. It, it was, um, I was very, very passionately moved during some events that I'm sure you can find out if you watch the music video that I won't mention to stay uh, out of politics or, you know, that conversation. But um, I, what really frustrates me is uh, sexual abuse in society and how it happens to women. And, you know, I was motivated to, I was really angry, um, kind of when I wrote that song and I was sitting down with the producer and he was, he was, but there's also a lot of really good men out there too. And the guy that I did the song with being one of them, he's so gentle and sweet. And I'm just like, I'm so angry. This is happening. These people have power. They, they do these things and they, they avoid the law and like, there's no justice. And I, I, I'm so upset because like the majority of women I speak to have had an abuser of some sort or some situation in life. And then I kind of use the anger to think like, you know, you, again, you can't carry that pain around or that definition of, of um, I'm not a fan of the victim mindset and I don't find it empowering to empower the victim mindset. And there's a healing 
And I wanted to help women really to reclaim their bodies and reclaim that energy and to not like that does not define you. And you don't have to carry that around, you know, in your bag to your freaking vacations and the rest of your life and in your, fu- in your future relationships. You know, I want people to be able to heal from that sexual trauma and, and, and reclaim, you know, like their power of who they are. And so, um, I created that video and, you know, it's all, all different women of all different backgrounds, ethnicities, and there's a young woman in the music video and it's, I didn't plan it this way, but ironically, she's wearing red, which kind of ties into the symbol of Little Red Riding Hood. Yes. The beginning, you know, she's kind of stuck in her silo world of watching the media. And I mean, this is for anybody, right? Like if we have blinders on, if we're just continually taking in information, that's just going to keep confirming our own biases of what we grew up on. We Mm -hmm. can't really break out of the mold. So she's in this abandoned haunted house and she's, you know, watching life unfold. And for young women, it's like sending a message that, oh, you know, like people do bad things and they just get away with it and just like, yeah, you can talk about it, but it doesn't really matter because there's going to be no consequence and just shut up and get on with it. This is how life is. And so I saw that message and I wanted to, again, have a, a, a more empowering message of like, that might be this reality, but then you walk out of the house, you come into nature, you come to all these female, older wild wolves that are in there. And we've, we've gone through, like we've figured out a way to exist in that and form our own belief system and connecting with nature and connecting with the wild essence of, of being a woman. Right. And like, it's, it's so much deeper. And then realizing that no matter what, if you're in that power, like, you know, they can take your body, but they can't take the mind, you know, and, and having that, that essence of, um, you know, of, of, of being able to reclaim and redefine who you are. So, and then the people I did the music video with, oh man, it was, Stunning. Oh, it was, it was, it was really powerful. And at the mm-hmm. end we're all in white, you know, together. And she's kind of been initiated into this mm-hmm. new era of, of reclaiming your body as a woman. And so, yeah. Yeah. I'm so glad you, you mentioned it because I was like, that was something that struck me um, very strongly. And that's why I say your feminist messaging has been very healing and reaffirming. So as you continue to age and have fun and be the gypsy that you are and make this amazing music, um, I do want you to know your music videos are definitely uh, tying into your cinematic ambitions as well. So uh, hats off to you, April Aileen. Thank you so very much. And um, um, any last words you want to share with us before we go? Oh, just enjoy the song, blast it in your car, sing it, tag me on Instagram stories, share it with your friends. I will, you know, I just want people to dance and have a good time. And, uh, and you know what, we'll, we'll get, we'll get through it all together. So just, you know, one smile and one, one shake at a time. (laughs) (laughs) I totally love that. Totally, totally love that. So one smile and one shake at a time. So (laughs) indeed we have some amazing things that are happening. Be sure to follow her on her website, which has everything that's aprilaileen.com. Of course, YouTube, SoundCloud, Facebook, Instagram, coming soon, TikTok. And of course, YouTube has all of her amazing music videos, which I, I really love the artistry that you're, you're presenting out to the world. And um, thank you so much for being a great guest. Oh, thank you for having me, Christy. It's been a pleasure. And it's been a pleasure for me as well. All right, everybody, enjoy. And thank you for checking out this special edition of The Christy Taylor Show. Yeah.